Welcome back as we enter into what will undoubtedly spark a very heated debate at the moment, but it's a conversation that we have to have in light of recent incidents, in fact, in light of a shocking track record in this space. Now, when it comes to man's best friend, the pit bull immediately strikes one as being a dog of power, of passion, undying willingness to please if you have ever owned one. However, following years of vicious attacks on innocent citizens, including young children, the Cizwe Kupelo Foundation has called for the immediate ban of pit bulls in South Africa. And while some have joined the petition claiming that the dogs are too dangerous, others have called for tighter regulations around training the animals and vetting owners. And today we are going to discuss the ban on pit bulls. Are you for it or against. Now, our panel consists of professional canine behaviorist and trainer, Taryn Blythe, as well as Kelly Turner, a proud foster mom and owner of a pit bull. And we'd love to hear your thoughts as well, especially if you have direct experience and insights to share with us. Please use the details below. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. I'm sure your world, is, both of yours, has changed quite dramatically over the last couple of weeks because of this intense pressure. Kelly, maybe I can start with you because let's get to the heart of the breed itself. The English Bull Terrier, Staffy, they share a commonality in that space. What defines a pit bull as a power breed? So breeds um, were, are characterized by specific behavioral and physical traits. And um, over the course of history, humans have bred dogs to perform specific tasks and jobs. And pit bulls have been bred to be strong, powerful, highly driven animals with a strong prey drive. And they needed these traits to carry out the tasks that the humans gave them. There were also companionship tasks within that. And I think that almost that iron will has now been turned in completely the wrong direction. Taryn, as someone who has lived in the space and probably understands the, 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 the way that breeds can manifest where we are in their current phase, Countries like Russia, Denmark, UK, Portugal, a host of others have banned or there have been restrictions placed on the ownership of pit bulls. In a nutshell, why is the pit bull not the dog for everyone? I think that, um, you know, that having dealt with so many dog owners throughout my career, um, what people are generally looking for when they're bringing a dog into their home is they want a companion that they can really share their lives with um, at home with their friends and family, outdoors with recreation, jogging, you know, hiking. To your lifestyle, yeah. You know, to fit into the lifestyle. And I think that people are generally looking for a dog that's fairly easygoing um, and that isn't high risk towards other animals um, when they're out in public. And the reality is that unfortunately, um, as Kelly mentioned, because of what they've been bred for, they are higher risk when it comes to other animals. Um, and so they don't always fit that easily into that sort of lifestyle and they do need more careful management. So I think a lot of people get these dogs without understanding how to be responsible for them and how to manage them to not set them up to fail. And I think people are sometimes a bit disappointed when they may have limitations on the lifestyle with such a dog, and it's not what they planned. So it's not necessarily for everybody. I think in a South African story, and, and from a lot of the feedback we've had over the last couple of weeks, people are buying these dogs to protect their household. And they are buying them from unreputed breeders who are breeding the dogs to fight and kill each other. Mm -hmm. And if this is happening everywhere, I'm looking at the imprint on that gene pool. So, and we know that, that dogs' genes do carry these traits, very, hence why we've kind of almost painted them into this, these tiny little narrow lanes in terms of their, their breeds and almost overbred in that space. That being said, we need something to change. We need something to shift. Is the ban where this needs to be? What do you think the ramifications of this ban are going to be? I mean, we've already seen over 40 people on the first day of people talking about this handed their pit bulls over. Mm. How do you see this playing out? So the thing is you can weaponize any animal if you, if you wanted to. And banning an entire breed is not going to solve any problem. What can help solve the problem is putting measures in place to strictly regulate ownership and to make sure that owners are aware of the dog that they want to buy or adopt and are willing to take the responsibility to you know, pre prevent any tragic incidents from happening. Um, banning the pit bull, I believe, is probably just going to cause underground yeah. 
fight dog fighting and backyard breeding to become more lucrative than it already is. And the ramifications of that is it, cause, it, it, it will probably cause the legally owned pit bull and the owner to be vulnerable targets. Yeah, completely. Um, I know it feels very difficult to find an answer and we are screaming for an answer, but at its heart, Families have lost people dear to them. A family has lost a child very recently. Um, and we know, I think, so many of us who are parents to young children, when we heard of the nature of Seasway's passing as well, his death, how he was killed, it is something that we can't accept. So we have to look at this from both sides. But I really do understand what Kelly is saying in terms of us just blanketing one solution is going to add even more fuel and fire to the underground movement. We saw that through COVID in other areas. We need to find a solution that's going to work for both sides. So please keep your comments and your insights coming. 63 We'd love to hear from you. It's my feel good work this show. Well, two very balanced comments there. And it's easy to understand. I've still got Taryn and Kelly with me. Um, it's a difficult one to broach. And I'll just will kind of paint this picture that we live in a world where there are more lions in captivity than there are in the wild. So we understand that this is a wild frontier when it comes to pets, but with dogs, we know the breeds, we have infrastructure, we've got behaviorists, we have an understanding of the space. So surely education should hold sway over a blanket ban. Taryn, why are you so against this notion of just banning a breed? Um, I don't think, I mean, first of all, just on a practical level, I don't think it would it's ever possible, actually yeah. happen. Um, we already have um, our law enforcement stretched really thin. It's very difficult to get them to act. Um, so I don't think putting any huge restrictions in place is actually practically going to do anything. Um, I, I do think that um, what is really needed is honesty and openness about the breed. Um, I think there's a huge amount of denial about what the breed was selected for. They were selected to be fighting dogs. And that means that they have a behavior pattern that is inclined to want to grab, shake, and rip things to pieces. And if that is directed onto the wrong thing, that is hugely oh. problematic. And I think people are, you know, people do not want to admit that genetics matter. Um, and nobody would deny that a border collie um, enjoys stalking and chasing other animals. We have selected that into them so that they are good herders. Um, we have dogs that point to show where animals are. We have dogs that flush animals out. We have dogs that retrieve. We have dogs that bend, that can go into tunnels. Yes, <laughs> and, but you know, when it comes to pit bulls, we have bred them to kill other dogs. And we have to stop pretending that that's not a reality. Mm. Um, and only by understanding that and actually forcing rescue organizations to educate people who are wanting to adopt these dogs, they're not like every other dog. And we have to recognize what breeds, what breed traits are and what it predisposes them to do. That is what really needs to happen. Honesty, education, and the fortitude to follow through and actually maintain that relationship. It's a responsibility you take on your shoulders if you own a pit bull. You've got the most gorgeous, yes, she looks a little intimidating, mm -hmm. but from what I garner, Pitbull Willow is just the most amazing companion to you. What's it taken to get her to that point? And how did you approach adopting a Pitbull? What was going through your mind? What were you expecting? So having grown up with English Bull Terriers and Staffies, I'm really familiar with the sort of power breed. And, um, and the first thing I did was make sure that I adopted Willow from a reputable rescue breed. organization who specializes in the breed, does all the necessary vetting and make sure that they're sending the dog to a home that is aware of the breed, understands their nature and, um, you know, is responsible Honesty. in that way. Yeah. Honesty, Honesty, exactly. Um, and then the second thing was to, to train Willow. And funnily enough, I actually signed up for Taryn's puppy classes and... Um, training Willow and socializing her is an ongoing process that, and it will always be a part of our lives because, again, that prey drive that she instinctively has as a pit bull will always be there and it's something that we're acutely aware of and we need to manage that on a constant basis. Um, and using positive reinforcements is the best way, in my opinion, to train an animal because not only is it fun and entertaining for Willow and super rewarding for her, it helps us build a really strong and trusting bond with her and that bond is what can help us you know protect the public and 
And the dogs yeah, themselves. Yeah, and protect the breed. And this is not just with pit bulls. There are other breeds that have similar kind of track records. Unfortunately, it's always the extreme sides of the conversation that garner all the headlines and the extreme stories. Mm -hmm. So once again, I have to reiterate, we are not detracting in any way from the losses experienced by people who have gone through this. It's absolutely awful. The ban might be a notion as the first step, but I, I can see practically it's not going to work in that sense. So in this essence of wanting to be honest and connect to the right people and spread the right kind of information, if we've got questions, if we are a pit bull owner who needs to enter into this journey, where do we go? Who do we speak to right now? I think actually the Pitbull Federation of South Africa mm -hmm. is a good place for pit bull owners to start. Um, they've done a, a huge amount of education and they are actually brutally honest about the breed. So, um, you know, they take a lot of flack because of the things that they say, because they will tell, you know, say to people um, that if you have a pit bull, you may need to have this dog separated from other animals in your home. Um, that they can, you know, live with limitations and restrictions on their lifestyle because they have to manage the dogs not to set them up to fail. So I think the Pitbull Federation is a good place to start, or otherwise any registered behaviorist and trainer, I think that's really so important. Um, unfortunately, our industry isn't regulated, so you'll get a lot of people who have no qualifications mm -hmm. claiming to be trainers. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, uh, Kelly mentioned um, positive reinforcement. So people who understand the emotional aspect of dogs, they understand um, how important it is to protect them emotionally, um, and to develop a relationship of trust with animals. That is the sort of professional that you want to go to. And somebody who recognizes, again, genetic traits, what dogs were selectively bred for, so that they can really take that into account when dealing with the dog and doesn't just come up with platitudes like, oh, well, it's all how you raise them, yeah. or if you're just, you know, a, the best kind of owner, everything's going to be fine. It's, it's not that There's simple. It's complicated. That chance. Yeah, yeah, I think it's the same thing if you own a snake, if you own any kind of dangerous animal, you've got to take into account that there are repercussions. All of this being said, our heart is certainly with those who have gone through any kind of loss in this space. We do really understand and feel your pain. Unfortunately, in this space, the culpability seems to rest solely on the shoulders of human owners breeders and people within the underground rings breeding these dogs for that purpose now today, not on the part of the dogs. But please, if you're going to enter into this kind of long-term relationship with a pit bull, know the space, know the breed, know the dog, and have the right people around you to be able to manage that journey. Um, be proactive about socializing and having your dog trained by a registered specialist. You can learn and understand their breed and their behavior and know the space that you're playing in. And also make sure to leash and lock up your dog to avoid any potential tragedy if that's within your property. You have responsibilities.